We're joined this morning by Elle Jones, who's a professor at Mount St. Vincent University in Halifax. She is an activist. She is Halifax's former poet laureate, and she is our guest. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. Professor, thank you for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Magda's reporting and some of the reaction that she gathered is a great introduction to you. Let me ask you a similar question. What did you think of what you heard in the throne speech on the issue of racial justice? So as we just heard from the previous guests, um, we heard a lot of empty language, but no real concrete policy around criminal justice. So um, we had a phrasing that we need to address uh, systemic inequality and racism in the justice system, and then no actual plans. And I want to point us to, for example, um, the Black Caucus that released a plan this summer that uh, had some very concrete ideas, abolishing minimum sentences, addressing community sentences, looking at parole in eligibility periods. And these are things that have already been tabled and often been tabled over and over and over again in reports. So to not hear even those kind of concrete things is disappointing and I think points towards a lack of real will to do action. Okay, yeah, you're referring to back in June, Greg, uh, Greg Fergus announced that whole series from the Black Caucus, the MPs and the senators at that time, the reforms that they were looking for. So the, the particular language that you were referencing from the throne speech yesterday was this promise to reform the criminal justice system in the entire range, the entire spectrum, from diversion to sentencing to rehabilitation to records, the whole thing. It looks like, you know, as, as, as you say, an all-encompassing promise, but not substantive in the way you were hoping. And for example, this summer, Trudeau took a knee at protests, as we saw happen performatively for many politicians and police. And yet, of course, no mention of defunding, um, which I don't think I expected, but it just shows again that it's very easy to use this language of recognition or we need to act. And what we're never hearing from this government is uh, any kind of concrete plan, including fulfilling promises that were made in 2015 around criminal justice, which have not been fulfilled. Um, we can even look at the recent COVID pandemic and how that impacted people in prisons and the federal government's refusal to release people from prisons as people died and as people got infected to show that um, a lot of this stuff is not only empty, but in some ways alarming. So when we hear about things like training police and modernizing police forces, that actually seems to suggest an influx of money that may actually be going counter to what we've been talking about all summer and what the black community has been pushing for. Okay, again, come back to the point, because again, in the throne speech, the promise to move forward on enhanced civilian oversight for the RCMP and address standards on the use of force. In that pledge, was there anything that uh, was positive to your eye? Um, potentially, but what does that mean again? So uh, the police already have oversight agencies, and yet we aren't seeing them do their job. The question isn't do they exist? The question is what happens when there's oversight? There's been so many lawsuits against the RCMP, yet the RCMP continue to do what they do. Um, so the urgency here is that people are dying. People are being killed by the police. And beyond that, um, we have 42% of our federal prisons are Indigenous women right now. Um, indigenous men are highly over-incarcerated as well. Indigenous youth are over-incarcerated, and black people also represent a huge disproportionate incarceration. Um, these are life-threatening conditions we're talking about, yet we're not seeing anything other than, oh, you know, yes, we take this seriously. And beyond that, we also heard language around the strong hand of criminal justice, which actually, again, suggests a real will towards authoritarian policing and force, that kind of language is in fact very colonial language that I think, again, sets an alarm when we're also hearing on the other hand, oh no, you know, we want to return community control to indigenous communities, but then use this very colonial language of the strong hand of criminal justice. So let me just read uh, that, that, that line in particular so people know what we're talking about. The government will take steps to ensure that the strong hand of criminal justice is used when it is needed to keep people safe, but not where it would be discriminatory or counterproductive. So especially when we then move into a discussion, particularly of criminal justice as focused on black and indigenous people, which was the content of the, the speech, was largely focused on systemic racism within the justice system. I think that language of a strong hand directed towards black and indigenous people, um, it certainly has a colonial overtone to it and an overtone of force. And that again runs very counter to then rhetoric that says, oh no, but we want to address the disproportionate incarceration or we want to address policing. Um, I don't know if you can really address colonial policing um, or the use of force against black people by then using the language of force. So 
Um, there's been many, many plans over the years tendered, not even on things that are so-called radical, like defunding, on just basic reforms. The speech could have very much has just listed those things that have been in report after report after report. I mean, this is not new information. The Senate has presented all kinds of uh, reports on prisons. Kim Pate, for example, Senator Pate, has been doing a lot of work not only to address criminal justice, but to address elements in society that lead into the criminal justice system, such as proposing a universal basic income and talking about how that affects particularly women living in poverty. And none of that material is present in the speech. So that shows that you know all this work and all this rhetoric and all this activism and us hitting the streets and everything that's been happening really has had no impact in terms of how Trudeau and his government is willing to act. Um, I don't think that's unexpected. It's in fact par for the course from the very beginning, from 2015, when we saw promises made um, about how we were going to change prisons. We have not seen action, but that just continues. L. Jones, I appreciate your perspective very much on this today. We'll see if there's further response to the kinds of issues you raise as we watch the resuming of Parliament today. Thank you very much for being our guest. Again, Professor L. Jones from Halifax.